Fallout London is a full conversion mod made by Team Folon for Fallout 4, and something I've had my eyes on playing for years now. With an amazing amount of new and fun quests and factions to dive into, a ridiculously detailed world to explore full of iconic landmarks, and a difficulty level that punishes even the smallest mistake, so what better way to experience this mod than giving myself 50 days in-game to see what I can achieve on hard mode. No set objectives, just explore and get involved with anything I stumble across. The adventure begins on day one with me inside a test tube with mysterious scientists creepily watching, and calling me the most handsome test tube subject ever seen. And of course they're right, I've got a magnificent bald head and full beard. I'm also a northern lord who definitely wasn't scammed and gifted a tree somewhere in the UK to rule over. With a bunch of stats to reflect my charming personality and superior intellect, unmatched strength and endurance to hopefully give me a head start against my new southern friends. I have some special talents which let me carry more weight at a minor cost if I'm encumbered, and have a boost to perception when wearing glasses. Just after they finish admiring my exceptional skills, a strange man on a balcony appears and tells them to stop creeping, and after an explosion, they're killed by some unknown assailants. But thanks to the explosion, I can now punch my way out of the test tube and get on with the adventure. I start to move through the lab facility to find a way out while avoiding gunfire, and find myself locked in a room and needing to open the door with a terminal. But this also unlocks a cursed enemy from the cages, the mighty Radfrews. After beating the weird rodents, I proceed into another room with Pip-Boys, but also the superior UK-produced Attaboy, which acts as a new handy tool for my questing. And with it, the door is also unlocked, which leads me to an elevator to escape. Except it's already occupied, and instead of helping a guy out, they plunge me into darkness after diverting power. But there's a handy torch attachment I can grab, which fits nicely onto my belt to help me see. Continuing on through corridors, I find a strange man behind some shutters, who seems to be the man in charge and head up a lift to escape the facility, and end up inside the shard, where this creep called Mr. Smythes decides he's feeling sorry for me and opens the door for my escape, which leads me down into the London tube network. Encountering even bigger Radshrews, which nearly kill me with poison, I need a weapon, and my prayers are answered with a walking cane and a esteemed gentleman like myself can use to beat the peasants, I mean Radshrews with. And with a nice magazine to read for my commute, and a free tube ticket for my troubles, I can open the gate and proceed, although I'm not sure who would have stopped me jumping the gate. After taking the escalator to the service, I jump on the working train and head into the city of London taking in the views, and it's amazing how it looks so close to the London of today. Day 2, and the train surprisingly crashed, causing me a couple of injuries affecting my damage received and damage output. A fine start to waste on life. I also meet the knockoff Peaky Blinders called the Vagabonds, who were the group who freed me from the lab, and offer to take me in, giving me a rundown of the various London factions I can encounter. Eventually taking me to a camp they've been using, which has been attacked by a rival gang. My first task is getting a medkit for this poor chap, so I head into Greenwich Station, take on my first real test in a friendly ghoul, grab the medkit, and return to see poor Ricky has been abandoned. So it's only fair I stitch him up with my high intelligence and head to the Swan and Mitre pub to help my new friends stop an attack. And on the way, I encounter a true nightmare. Giant leeches that have left me traumatised. Oh my god! What the hell are these? Yeah. Leechling? What the hell? Oh, these are disgusting. Yeah. Can I hear more? Oh, look at the state of that! Uh, I'm not going to say what they look like, I'll just continue on my way. After a short journey, I arrive at the Swan of Mitre, which is under attack, grab a fancy shotgun from one of the already defeated enemies, and head inside to help out the gang. During the chaos, I grab a kill with a shotgun, but it's over pretty quickly, letting me do some looting for a new .32 pistol and ammo, and speak to a gang member called Yvette, who wants me to track down an enemy scout who managed to escape the commotion. Day 3 begins with me speaking to Yvette, who's a qualified psychiatrist, who cures one of my ailments from the train crash, and I head out on my quest to find the enemy scout. Equipped with my new Peaky Blinder attire, I travel north until I find the scout's location, because she'd been transmitted on an unsecure radio frequency. Heading inside, I have a snoop around for any loot I can find, and grab some tea bags. confront the scout and convince her to surrender, only to pull the Uno reverse, and end up using my new knife to finish the job. 
If you want to avoid giving away your secrets like our poor rivals did, then Surfshark would be the perfect VPN for you. A VPN covers all of your online activity. Once your device connects to the internet, all the information is encrypted so bad actors can't take advantage, ensuring your online activity is completely hidden. As someone who spends a lot of time online, Surfshark offers amazing online security and privacy. The VPN protects my internet traffic and IP address, and I can even set up alerts on my email addresses, credit cards and IDs to check if they've appeared in any leak sites. Surfshark also lets you access TV shows from around the world, which is perfect for a binge watcher like me. With over 3,200 servers in 100 countries, you can connect and watch your favourite shows be unlocked with the click of a button. Especially useful when Supernatural isn't available on the UK's Netflix, but every episode of this perfectly cheesy adventure is available in the US. And even better, you can use Surfshark on unlimited devices, so watch while you travel, or just relax in a home. So why not take advantage of my exclusive code VALEPLAYS at checkout, or use the link in the description to get yourself an extra 4 months free on top of any purchase. And just in case you're on the fence about Surfshark, they offer a 30 day money back guarantee, so you can try their fantastic service out with no risk. After leaving the scene of the crime, I take my first level up and grab Gunslinger for 20% more pistol damage, and head back to the old pub to turn in the quest to your vet and collect 100 tickets for my troubles. And I'm welcomed into the gang with open arms. I've got no time for the detritus right now. Day 4, and I'm still proving myself to my new family, and this time an old blind ghoul called Nelson needs his radio fixing to keep an ear out for the other gang. So I chat to the gang's supply guy Winston, who will look for an antenna to fix the radio if I go and collect his missing supply shipment. So it's off to the dodgy part of town, passing by an old pub I want to explore first. Inside I find a strange fungus growing on a wall and a poor fellow's skull. Let's hope it's not like the fungus from a notable game series. And I find a spectacular longsword, which is an upgrade on my current knife. I just need a suit of armour to complete the look now. I carry on the journey, finding some electronic components in an old computer store which might come in handy down the line, and eventually find the shopkeeper with the supplies who is being targeted by some hooligans. And after a rough start and a swift beatdown from these rapscallions, I get the hank of my new blade and dish out some medieval punishment on them. After saving the day, I speak to the shopkeeper Nadia, collect the supplies, and I've now unlocked my first trade of selling goods. Day 5, and I return to the pub to deliver the supplies to Winston, who gives me the radio antennas, and tells me to speak to Bullet Tooth Anthony for help repairing it. Mr. Bullet Tooth is repairing a laser rifle and won't help until I find him a photon agitator, but I prepared one earlier, and with that he fixes the radio, now just for some batteries. A man with a chunk of metal in his head might have batteries, but he wants me to settle a domestic dispute first. So I speak to another ghoul on his behalf, and with the apology accepted, I get the batteries and can return the radio to Blind Nelson. On day 6, with the radio returned, Nelson eavesdrops on a rival gang's radio broadcast about a vagabond prisoner being executed, and decides to take it out on me. Why do you even bring me this stupid radio anyway? You were just trying to upset me, weren't you? But soon has a change of heart when he wants me to launch a rescue mission for Yvette who's gone to free the prisoner. Hey, listen mate. Sorry I lost it on you a second ago. You did good with the radio. I need you to do something else for me now. Oh, here we go. Something much more important. Of course, you want something enough to blow my head off. So I prepare by taking the Life Giver perk for a boost of 20 HP and get on the road to help. First, get into the Greenwich Foot Tunnel so I can make my way into the rival gang's territory in Millwall. But this tunnel was not a fun place to commute through. Oh my god, I don't like this place at all. Why is it so dark? And it's freaking filled with radiation, I'm gonna die! Oh my god! Oh my god, what the hell? Oh! Why have they sent me in this place? I'm gonna die! Oh my god, this is terrifying! Let me out! I can't move. What the hell? Am I still getting radiation? What the hell's this? Oh my god. I'm dead. 
After being traumatised in the Tunnel of Nightmares, I've emerged into the territory of the Isle of Dog Syndicate, our arch rivals, and head to the execution site to see if I can help out with Yvette's plan. But, with my perception skill being so bad, I blow the entire operation by letting the gang over here were staging a breakout, and to help, I sprint away at full speed as a distraction, which somehow seems to work, and I'm told to meet Yvette at the Vagabond safe house. At first, she's annoyed at me for causing such chaos, but the radio soon pipes up, with the gang checking in, and they misunderstand her, so think I've done a fantastic job in helping the escape go smoothly. I don't complain, so get some extra respect, and enough experience for another level up. I pick up Confirmed Bachelor for 10% extra damage against the more common male enemies I'm encountering. Day 7, and after returning to the Vagabond's headquarters, they're impressed and invite me to join the gang, and it's a handy way to explore and level, so I accept. But there's a catch. I need to prove myself by killing a high-ranking Syndicate member and bringing proof. Luckily, the gang give me some help on this quest with a bunch of stim packs and a fancy chest plate from a suit of armour. Now just to head back to Millwall and find my target. My search starts badly with me getting attacked by wild dogs, as well as being overwhelmed by a group of gang members who forced me to retreat. But luckily, as I fall back into a side street, I spot my target and charge him with a knife which goes about as well as expected. So run away while healing, and start a drawn out gunfight. My accuracy is unmatched, and after deliberately missing a lot of shots, I finally take him down, and can take his lapel as a trophy to prove I completed the task. Day 8, and after returning to the Swan and Mitre, I'm officially welcomed into the gang and given a peaky blinder, I mean Vagabond hat, and increase my agility with that level up to start focusing on the sneak perks. Now I'm in the gang, it's time to help win the war we're in with some secretive missions. The first mission is a train heist to gather supplies from Winston, who is obsessed with a spy called 005, but I won't complain as he gives me a rather good silence pistol, so I'm off to catch myself a train for our cause. So, it's back over to Millwall for a long trek through enemy territory to get to the train station entrance, and it doesn't go well for me on this first journey. After being spotted, I'm forced into a building to hide out, but it's full of hooligans with fully automatic weapons who finish the job before I even get a swing off with my sword. And so I wake up on day 9 and have to do the journey again, but maybe this time using a more stealthy approach. This time, I take the long way around, trying to avoid any unnecessary fights, but still find myself in a few spots of bother with Syndicate gang members. But they don't really have much to counter my longsword, which does heavy damage, or my new pistol, which is my new favourite weapon. And eventually, I find my way into a bunker, which is a secret access route to the station. Inside, I take the short train ride to a huge bunker door and open it up, only to be terrified by what's on the other side. I don't like it, what's in here? Oh my god. Oh my god, run, run, run. After a bit of a jump scare, I gain some courage and begin to fight back with some fantastic grenade throws and courageously standing and fighting the robot in a tense battle. Oh, oh my god. And after getting cocky from doing a good chunk of damage, I'm punished with a swift death. The second attempt goes horrendously wrong with barely any damage before I'm killed, but with a plan, I return to finish the job. This time, I wear it down gradually by having it chase me, and then wait for it to head back into the bunker, which slowly works by me getting shots off as it's confused and eventually killing the robot. I then log onto the terminal and force the train to stop at this station, giving me enough time to clear a few of the remaining enemies in a short fight, and eventually, I've got the entire train to myself. So of course, I spend a bit of time looking for any loot I can claim for myself, before driving the train back to a station that the Vagabonds have taken over so they can collect the delivery. A quick loot of the enemies they left behind gives me some ammo and goods, but a rad storm and some enemies prevent me from leaving, so I rest overnight in the station. Day 10, I make it back to the pub and turn in my quest, and despite getting the gang a bunch of supplies, I get moaned at for not blowing the train up. You can't win with this moaning old guy. With that finished, I level up and take Gunslinger 2 to improve my already powerful pistol with an extra 20% of damage, and pick up a new mission from Johnny, who wants me to rescue a bunch of our captured gang from a prison on an old warship, and sink the thing to the bottom of the Thames to really annoy our rivals. But I need to gather supplies before heading on another mission, so we visit our old shopkeeper friend and do some bartering, before finding something in the greenhouse. Are you allowed to grow all of this? I'm fairly sure this is banned. Can you cut me in on the profits? 
Day 11 is prison break time, and the route of the boat is mostly clear from the other missions. So I approach and start to attack the prison guards, eventually thinning them down into manageable numbers, and then finishing the last of them until I find a guard with a key to open the prison door. The inside is heavily guarded, but mostly guards with melee weapons, so the silent pistol does very good work thinning them out. And I eventually fight my way to the deck, where the vagabond prisoners are held, and finish off the security team. Larry tells me to open the doors via a terminal, but I don't have access codes, so I have to head to the captain's deck to reset them. So I fight my way up through the decks, taking on some more of the prison guards, and eventually find the terminal to reset my password. And with that done, all I have to do is head back to the prison deck and release my friends who will head back to the Swan and Mitre before me. But there's also other prisoners on board, and these folks seem to be a bit posher than me. I don't want any innocent deaths, so free them and agree to open the armoury so they can escape. I find a mysterious squid doll that makes me feel strange, but carry on, and find my way down to the bulkhead so I can place the bombs to sink the prison boat. But it's full of some high level guards. They take a lot of punishment, so I throw in a nuka grenade I find, which does the job for me and clears most of the resistance out. Grabbing the armory key, I head up to open the armory and let the gentry prisoners get out with a fighting chance, and head back down to the bulkhead to plant the explosives before my escape. And with no fear or panic whatsoever, I leave and manage to catch a glimpse of the explosion in between fighting for my life from Syndicate reinforcements. Day 12, and I return to the pub of Hero again, and quickly shut up the moaning gaunt who thought I'd killed innocent people after saying I'd freed them all and we're becoming local heroes. I level up after the quest and put the point into agility training, again for sneak perks. I spot some very odd looking fishmen outside of the pub, so thinking I've lost it, relax for the rest of the day. Checking what improvements I can make to my armour on the workbench, hoping to help increase my survivability a bit more, and some more stocking up on ammo after selling some of the loot I'd found from a previous mission. Day 13, and it's time for a new quest. This time from Bullet Tooth Anthony, who mentions we need some extra firepower. And he knows of a warehouse that receives regular deliveries from the posh faction called the Gentry, so I'm off to liberate those weapons for us. Anthony has an old fling who might be able to help me crash the security systems and get into the warehouse so I head off to her bakery to convince her to help. I manage to find Valentina who's happy to help me break in, I just need some components so she can build a device, and luckily I've hoarded enough to deliver everything she needs, and she seems quite excited to help. Oh lovely, come down my back passage love, and I'll see how I can fix you up. I think I've got different things in mind here, I just need help, not uh, going down your back passage. Leaving Valentina with my components and scarred from her innuendos, I head to the warehouse, taking out the guards who are protecting the front of the building. The warehouse is packed to the rafters with enemies, so I try and filter them through slowly by taking cover behind a security door, which works as I slowly chip away at the enemies. After clearing the warehouse, I head to the back door and unchain it to let the vagabond back up in, who get right to work grabbing the guns we've come for. And while they grab everything, I plant explosives to take out a big chunk of the guns and ammo left so the Syndicate can't use them. So after a swift exit and a huge explosion, which leaves my ears ringing, the mission is complete. Day 14 and I turn in the quest. Of course mentioning to Anthony his old fling wants to get her hands on his tools again, and even the usual moaning gaunt is happy when I tell him I left the whole place up in flames. I get a level up after this conversation, and take some charisma training, hoping that this will open options for me. And after being told to return for a final job in a few days, I head off to find the mysterious Thames Haven I was told about, who might be able to help me figure out why I woke up in a lab. On the journey, I bump into a wandering armor trader, so take the opportunity to pick up some nice new upgrades, hopefully making me a lot harder to kill, and eventually walk into a fight between a bunch of dogs. So I help out the bulldog named Churchill, who is getting ganged up on. After saving him, he runs back to his owner, who proceeds to berate me for killing his other dogs. But someone who's so bad at controlling them shouldn't be an owner, so I adopt Churchill, and now he's my first official companion of the journey. Day 15 begins after an overnight stay at the Prilla Dog Factory, guarded by a group called the Tommies, and I stick around to investigate the building. Inside, there's a demonstration from a group of workers who are demanding better working conditions and an increased salary, which I think is more than fair. After the protest has finished, I'm called upstairs by a top hat wearing posh bloke with a proposal. He wants me to shut down the protests that are causing him a headache. But instead of a pay rise, he wants me to kill the leader, which isn't my style, so I convince him to try and bring him on side for the good of the company using my charisma. 
but this backfires as the posh weasel decides to promote the protest leader, puts him in charge of the worst performing area, and ties his salary to sales. So now I've probably made things worse by turning this peaceful protest leader into another boss from hell, but as a silver lining, I level up and take Life Giver 2 to increase my max health by another 20 points. Day 16, and the mission to find Thames Haven continues, carrying on down the road past a familiar shop called Fesco, and eventually bumping into a group of helpful soldiers who mention the main entrance is barricaded. They give me directions to an alternate and more dangerous way in, and they also seem to be rather patriotic. God save our gracious queen, long live our noble queen. Don't give up your day job, fella, that is some terrible singing. Run like hell and you'll be there. I follow the directions and find the back entrance into the town, only to find this path takes me through some filthy and irradiated tunnels. The tunnels start nice enough with a room of loot giving me a false sense of security, but I'm swiftly attacked by Radshrews who are very annoying, followed by an attack from my favourite creature in all of London, the giant leeches which make my skin crawl. But after some time, I reach inside the town and speak to the leader, Rachel Hall, who seems to be one of the fish people I'd spotted a few days ago. She sold the schematics to the lab to Gorn from the Vagabonds, but won't tell me where she found them without helping with a problem. The town is under attack from creatures, and the lone ferryman is defending it, so I guess we're blackmailed into helping. Day 17, and I head down an elevator to go and help the ferryman in his fight pushing through what seems to be an old tube station, looting anything useful that I can find, until I stumble across a locked door and a terminal, and once opened, find the injured ferryman and a giant lizard fighting off a horde of leeches. So clear them out and ask how I can help. He gives me a demolition charge, and asks me to close the breach the creatures are getting through, so after far too long running around completely lost, I find my way into the area, place the charge, and close up the breach, saving the town from the attack. I then head upstairs and can open the Thames Haven market, so head inside to turn the quest into Rachel, who tells me she had received the lab plans from a young boy called Archie, who had briefly lived here, and who the ferryman had relocated because the Thames folk aren't a fan of humans. Day 18 and I want to explore Thames Haven, as it's one of the most unique settlements I've seen in Fallout. I spend time looking around the market, and manage to pick myself up some interesting glow mushroom pizza, which even has someone I can deliver to. I also speak to the ferryman, who tells me that he took the boy Archie to a nearby settlement called Rotherhithe, and that he had also found Archie after he had been chased by soldiers from another lab, so this boy definitely holds some clues to my origin. I then nose around town before relaxing at the local hotel for an early start to the nearby town. Day 19 and it's time to find Archie, so I make the journey to Rotherhithe, and a local guard tells me the town is under attack from Mylerks, and they won't speak to me without me clearing them out. So I spend a ridiculous amount of time trying to navigate this oddly built town looking for the Mylerk egg nests, all while trying to avoid the water which gives 250 rads per second, so I can't afford any mistakes. After clearing the town of Mylerk nests, I head inside the plane and find Archie who was kidnapped along with someone called Lazarus and taken to a lab, just about escaping thanks to the ferryman and his pickpocketing skills. Archie will retrace his steps and find the lab entrance if I agree to help his other friends escape the lab, so I agree. And just before heading back to the ferryman to get his help, deliver the pizza I picked up to a fish person hanging around in some pyjamas. Day 20 and the first job is to use my level up on getting a sneak perk to help me avoid tougher fights. I then head back to near Thames Haven to enlist the ferryman's help who has now recovered enough to start piloting his boat again. First, we need to get out of the dock area and into the Thames, but the gatehouse is occupied by hooligans, so I've got some killing to do. I first head into the gatehouse, lower a crane to create a bridge for me to cross, and press a button to open up the gate, and head to the ferry for what I assume is an easy fight at this point, nearly forgetting Churchill. What? Churchill, get on quick! Oh my god, don't fall. Embankment on the other side. But the fight turned out to be pretty terrifying, with hooligans appearing from all sides with what seemed like automatic weapons. I could shoot explosive barrels to take out small groups, but a lot of them were out of range of my weaponry and caused some issues. But thankfully, the ferryman navigated me through without too much damage caused and dropped me off so he could pick up Archie. Day 21, and I need to meet the ferryman and Archie across the Thames. And I was told the best route is Tower Bridge, so make my way over to Cross. The journey there was dangerous enough with a large group of hooligans to get past, but they don't take too much damage before death these days. 
But the bridge was unnerving, mainly because it's occupied by a group of cannibals called the Beef Eaters, and they like to charge you with giant pikes. So I wasted no time in chucking grenades to thin the herd, and calmly using my pistol to clear anyone who came anywhere close to hitting range. They do have some cool outfits though, so once they're dead, I do some looting and carry on until I'm across the bridge. As I make my way over to the ferryman meeting point, a radstorm rolls in and I'm forced to take shelter in a small hut until it's passed over. Day 22, and I meet up with the ferryman whose navigation robot is malfunctioning, so I help out by resetting the navigation beacon at this dock, and the robot starts to work as normal. And thankfully, they retraced Archie's steps and the lab is under a large monument with a golden urn on top, so it's time to investigate. On the way, I hear gunshots and find a group of Tommies fighting hooligans, so step in to help them out, with some fantastic shots from a service rifle I'd found from my earlier hooligan fight. I continue clearing the base out of the enemies, grab some of the loot to sell, and head down to carry on with my day until I notice a postbox robot, which has some nice items to grab, and of course, I pick up my own Tommy uniform for some more armour upgrades. Day 23, and I finally arrive at the location of the lab, but have to take out a cyborg pigeon before I can get inside. But once in, the lab is abandoned and without any power, although I do notice a strange noise. To investigate, I need to boot up the generator. This turns on the power, but also a bunch of turrets. So now I need to fight through these to get to the terminal, which will open the door. Eventually, after a good squatting into cover session, the turrets are dead, and I open up the door where I'd heard the noises. And I immediately needed a change of underwear. Hello? Churchill going first. Oh my god, what the hell? What the hell is that? That is disgusting. Churchill, kill it! Oh my god, don't get near me. No! No, not Churchill, please! Oh my god. But, at least I get some armour to go along with my increased heart rate. And the nearby terminal reveals all of Archie's friends were experimented on or killed. Probably by that big beast. So we hit a dead end on our origin story. Day 24 and I head back to Archie to tell him the bad news about his friends. And agree to take him along to a place called St Paul's Sanctuary to find his remaining friend Lazarus. So we head out on a journey to get to the town. Along the way, I encounter a strange but familiar sight. Down a side street, there's a small butcher shop selling mysterious pie filled with unidentified meat, right next to a barber shop with a surprising amount of blood on the floor. Probably not cannibals though, right? So I relax here for the night. Day 25, and I've not been eaten, so I can get on with my day, eventually getting to the gates of St Paul's and speaking to the guard. They're expecting an attack, so won't let me in. And with perfect timing, hooligans appear and I help out the guards by fending off these annoying foes. The Frenchman who leads the guards asks me to take out the hooligan leader while they fend off other waves, so I agree if it'll let me get into town quicker. I make a short journey to the Guildhall building. Well, so I thought, as I soon encounter some wild Mr. Handies who chase me around until I manage to get rid of them. But eventually I'm at the Guildhall and the hooligans here aren't too much trouble and I can do a lot more damage now my sneak is levelling up taking them out until I encounter the leader, Violent Violet, who puts up a pathetic attempt at defending herself. And with that, this hooligan gang should be dealt with. Day 26 begins with me returning to St Paul's, who are under attack from the last wave of hooligans. But after they're defeated, the Frenchman lets me in so I can speak with a bishop about getting payment for my help. Heading inside, Archie isn't too impressed of the settlement, so wants to stick around. So I keep him on the team for his lockpicking skill. And then to the cathedral, which is ridiculously detailed, and I think is my all-time favourite settlement in terms of Fallout design. I mean, just look at it. After exploring, I speak with the bishop who pays me for my work, but also tells me that Lazarus is no longer at the settlement, and a priest named Father Luke was investigating him. But that's a job for another day, as I want to heal up and do some trading. Day 27, and I use my level up to take Toughness 2 for an extra 10 damage resistance, crucial in helping me stay alive, and find Father Luke who is investigating Lazarus for being a bit of a naughty ghoul in a place of worship. So I agree to help find evidence of his drug sales. I have a route through his room for any evidence of wrongdoing, and find a list of customers left out in an empty drawer, so bring the evidence to Father Luke. Needing more evidence to banish Lazarus, I need to look into the customer Bones, who could be the Frenchman, the town chef, or an undertaker, 
so I head out to question them. First up is a rather angry chef, probably having a kitchen nightmare. I'm not yelling! I'm half mute, so I have to talk like this! Because I like cooking! Why else would I be a chef? The next suspect I speak to instantly drops his friend into trouble by saying he's the buyer named Bones. So I question him about the stash using charisma, and he opens up saying he can't sleep because he keeps imagining the deadly berries are watching him. Odd, but fair I guess. But he knows Lazarus is missing and mentions the chems he buys have an odd smell that Reverend Francis might be able to identify, possibly leading me to a place where ingredients are harvested. Day 28 and I find Reverend Francis and inquire about the smell of the chems. After him thinking I'm using them, he eventually identifies the smell as cheeseweed and mentions they grow in small patches in St Paul's Gardens. So after a short search I find a stash of chems hidden in the bushes, as well as a note with information about a meeting in Tower Hamlets. So with that I head out to the meeting location to hopefully bump into Lazarus. The route to the Berg shop meeting isn't very fun though, bumping into a group of wild angry dogs, getting attacked by a strange cult outside of a hospital who not only looked terrifying but felt like a step up in terms of difficulty, or when I wanted to look inside the hospital, encountered a strange weather effect which actually turned out to be an airborne disease called tunnel cough I'm now infected with. But on day 29, after a lot of pain, I arrive at the burger shop to do some investigating. And after helping myself to a lovely leftover Brahmin burger, I found an audio tape. And it turns out that our missing Lazarus has been taken to a place called Winter Garden by our vagabond rivals, the Isle of Dogs Syndicate. So we need to rescue him. I head off to Winter Garden, but first want to have a look inside a clothes shop I found, just in case there's any new items inside. Archer uses his lockpicking skill to break into the top floor, but sadly there's nothing of note to be found apart from a long dead gentry member, so we stop for the night and head to bed. Day 30 and the journey to Winter Garden continues with me first stumbling into a group of hooligans, who at this point are more of an annoyance than anything. With my pistol and rifle I can comfortably take them down from any range. After the hooligan fight I find an old children's hospital and decide to see what loot is available, and this place was disturbing. Not only was it creepy and packed full of enemies which caused me quite a few problems, but it was also home to a strange boss called Pugsy. He died easy enough, but the fact he was wearing the head of a beloved English bear used in children's charity events was a bit disturbing, but I happily keep it as a souvenir. Day 31, and still on the road to Winter Garden, I take a wrong turn to the Syndicate base of operations and get into a fight with a group of Milex in the distance. After killing them, I wonder what's going on and see Archie has aggravated the entire base full of Syndicate members and I'm in a massive fight for survival. So I start returning fire with the service rifle, which is starting to pack a bunch against a lot of enemies, especially when combined with the rifleman perk I take on leveling up. The numbers start thinning out through this nearly 10 minute long battle, which only worked after stocking Alfie with extra ammo reserves, and then barely able to graze me due to me tactically hiding behind a dumpster. And eventually, the last of the syndicate are dead and I can head over to claim my loot. But despite killing dozens of enemies who are across the river, I arrived at only a few left. And with all of the despawned enemies, goes a lot of capture of ammo and health, which I'll have to try and earn back another day. And on day 32, after fighting through one last group of Syndicate further in the complex, I've arrived at Winter Garden and head inside. It turns out to be a weird Christmas themed bar and for some reason I'm not attacked on sight. That is, until I insult a man for his lack of hair, causing some offence and kicking off a fight. I quickly run and duck into cover, and with Archie being a great companion by taking a beating while blocking their only route to me, I can take the guys out. Just having to avoid the odd bit of fire throwing my way in Molotovs, and after a couple of minutes the group is dead and I can loot the Winter Garden key from my bald friend. And with that, open the freezer which has been the home of our new girlfriend Lazarus for god knows how long. He explains he was a pre-war architect who was responsible for building the labs we've been encountering, and mentions a new lab in Islington. But the area is a hot spot for tunnel cough, and I'll need to speak to the Tommies in the hope they'll give me a gas mask to survive the area. I also agreed to help Lazarus get back into St Paul's Sanctuary as a favour for his information, so start heading back there. Day 33, and after making my way back to St Paul's, I find the bishop and convince him to do the right thing, with him accepting Lazarus back into the town for some rare good news. So I head outside to meet him with the good news, and good deeds are worth doing as he becomes a shopkeeper who will give me a very nice discount in his shop. But after a long few days exploring, I want to relax, so use the weapons workbench to add a sniper scope to my service rifle, and sell all of the goodies I picked up from a few days of violence. Day 34, and with information that the Tommy's main base is at the War Museum, I start to head in that direction. 
This time I decide to cross London Bridge which is being used as a toll by what looks to be a beefeater offering alternative passage away from the usual cannibal versions. I try and press him on if he's still a cannibal but I need more intelligence so I'll have to come back here. But I pay the 10 ticket toll and get on my way. Further on in the journey I bump into a group of pirate cosplayers called the Jaktars who operate out of a base in an old pirate ship but they're not too friendly so spend some time clearing this base out and the silence pistol is rarely becoming the star of the show. Taking these guys out with some sneak damage combined with the already high output. And on day 35 I arrive at the War Museum which is another great faction settlement with some ridiculous detail. I mean shout out to the mod team this is just amazing. But I'm not here to admire I'm here to get a gas mask so I find the kernel and ask. Equipment is stretched thin due to hooligan attacks and after I mention my exploits killing a hooligan leader I'm taken to the general. The Tommies aren't taking new recruits but I can help as a mercenary in exchange for a gas mask. And the survivors of the St Paul's hooligans are holed up in the Bank of England. So I'm off to clear out another of these groups who pop up like cockroaches. But first I spend some time being a massive nerd in the war museum looking at the exhibits and some of the detailed paintings on the ceilings. Day 36 and before heading to the bank I speak to the Frenchman back at Sanctuary to ask for help and he's more than happy to tag along with a group to help clear the place out so I start making my way over. I bump into a random group arguing in the street with one man being accused of lying to his friends about being a peasant. Turns out he's a gentry member and probably very rich but I don't think it's fair to see him killed to manage to defuse the situation before it gets out of hand with a charisma skill check. The bank area is accessed via Monument Station so I head down and start sneaking through the tunnel area which is occupied by hooligans. I clear them out and get a level up taking the intelligence boost up to 8 so I can speak to Beefy on London Bridge and then continue through the tunnel killing anything I encounter until I reach the other side. And on day 37 I find myself at the bank or Wank of England as it's now known and meet up with the Frenchman ready for a fight. We head inside to a grim scene full of skeletons from when the bombs dropped and notice how many enemies are on the compass. But the main door needs a key so it's time to explore. Me and the group the Frenchman brought fight through the back corridors of the bank with hooligans around every corner in fairly large numbers. But eventually I arrive at a corridor with a spare key on a chain so take that and head back down to the locked door for a big fight. Frenchman where the hell are you? I need help. Frenchman! Where is he? I've been abandoned by the French. Despite the Frenchman abandoning me in this fight I was able to clear out the room and he eventually emerges to help me with the rest of the fighting. I keep pushing through the new areas I've unlocked until I arrive at an old office room filled with some interesting loot. Not only is there a magazine to make Radaway better, another bank keycard for something, but there's also piles of gold bars so I'll happily loot them. Pushing further down into the bank we encounter some very odd creatures that emerge from the garden. Glad I didn't face them alone, but I also find a rather fetching top hat and the key belonging to the long deceased bank manager in his fallout shelter. And after unlocking the final door and clearing out the remaining hooligans the job is done and I can report back to the colonel to get my gas mask. But not before I investigate the strange voice over the intercom that seems to be coming from inside the massive vault. I needed to use a bank keycard I'd found earlier to open the door which is a very cool reveal of enough gold for me to retire and never have to adventure again. Or so I thought as Kira explains that she'd been trapped in here while treasure hunting and that the gold was fake and must have been replaced before the war. As a thank you for rescuing her from an eternity of these slowly devolving ghouls she offers to join my party but sadly I have Alfie so she heads off to Camden. But I think I'll ditch the annoying kid and find her again as she seems more competent. Day 38 and I head back to the war museum and finish the mission by chatting to the colonel who keeps his promise and hands me a gas mask to withstand tunnel cough. Now I can carry on to Islington but I want to sell everything from the bank to spend the day travelling to various shops to clear my inventory. And on day 39 I remember I can speak to Beefy on London Bridge about his cannibalism so I confront him about it. It turns out Beefy was a cannibal but has decided he was young and stupid when he made the decision to devour any human he encountered but has now stuck paying bribes to his old gang who are becoming more unreasonable. So he offers me a deal. I kill the beef eaters he's being threatened by and in return I can take over the Tollbridge settlement and he'll even stay on as a guard. That sounds like a deal to me. The first group are at Tower Bridge. Most of this has already been cleared from my last visit 
but a group move back in upstairs who are quickly dispatched. Even these guys aren't feeling like too much of a threat anymore, and I take some fancy new beef eater armour and the leader's head as proof. Day 40 and the hunt for the other cannibal groups leads me to Tower Hill Station with a group hiding out inside. The combination of Molotov cocktails and my pistol make this encounter easy work as well, with them not lasting more than a few seconds, and I find my next memento in the form of an ear, as well as a more fashionable piece of clothing. So apparently this, this cape is made of skin. Is it weird if I keep it? It's actually quite stylish. I arrive at the last location at an old dock and proceed to clear out the beef eaters, even using my new scoped service rifle, but my target falls into the ridiculously irradiated Thames, and without Aqua Boy, I'll die in seconds. So I carefully climb down a pipe, wait for the body to float over to me, and luckily manage to empty the inventory for the last trophy. And after a ridiculous amount of time trying to jump glitch my way back up the pipe and over the wall, I manage it. But notice Archie's in the water. Somehow he swims through the entire canal and ends up at a ladder to return. I sort of hoped he'd stay in there. I return to Beefy with the good news and trophies, which he disturbingly wants to keep and definitely not eat, but keeps his promise and I now get the London Bridge as a permanent settlement. With a settlement to build, I spent days 41 and 42 happily building with the mountains of junk I've found so far. I beef up security by adding in a couple of guard towers and assigning the mercenaries to keep watch, as well as adding in a turret on each side to help in case of an attack. I add in enough beds around the place for the settlers who decided to stay, as well as a bed for myself, plus some storage space, mannequins for my fancy outfits to be displayed on, and of course a flag to represent. I add in a bunch of growable plots for vegetables to get planting them for a consistent food source, adding in all of the usuals, as well as the mutated strain of strawberries which are huge, and who better to look after the farm than our resident cannibal. I place down some water purifiers into the Thames. Not sure I drink from that now, so god knows what horror is lying there from the radiation. And for the last couple of settlers I place down some scavenging stations, so they can gather materials while I'm away. Not a bad looking settlement for a couple of days work, and more importantly, I've now got a centrally located base of operations. Day 43, and the journey to Islington begins. I start by using my level up to take Gunslinger 3 for an even bigger boost to my pistol damage and head off leaving Archie behind. His voice was starting to irritate me a bit. On the way I encounter the now customary hooligan fight. Like these guys are worse than raiders, they're absolutely everywhere. But this time they put up a decent fight, getting me down to some worrying health levels. Maybe this area of London is starting to feature some higher tier enemies. I also do a small pub crawl on my way to Islington first stopping at the Shipmate pub which has now been taken over by the Beefeater Cannibals. I know I'm not local but come on, just let me have one drink before trying to kill me. And I stop off at the Blind Beggar pub which is in great condition apart from a few rad roaches. And I pick up some lovely Ion Brew as well as a coaster that permanently increases my perception by a point which I'll happily take as a freebie. Day 44 and I arrive at the map marker for Islington which seems to be under attack. Upon closer investigation, the hooligans seem to have some type of army robots fighting for them, so I use my service rifle to take them out from a distance, before closing the gap on some of the other fighters. Even fighting a legendary variant which was tough, and dropped a Chinese rifle I'd not seen before. And it turns out they're all using a ghoul as target practice who I decide to free from his bindings. On one, three, two, one. Oh my god, what a graceful fall that was. Mountbatten wants to tag along with me after I'd helped him to avoid going back to his gentry bosses, so he joins me in heading to the giant gate which seems to lead to the Islington area. As soon as I enter, there's another gunfight going on in front of me, with a young couple being attacked by thugs. I help Rosie and Guy take out these new enemies called Miller's Men, and she gives me a round L for helping deal with Miller's Men, and asks me for my help in dealing with more attacks further into the town. I follow them to a man named Dennis who seems to be the boss, and now I've got a roundel, I seem to be in the roundel gang. So of course, I'm dragged into an attack to liberate a building. We head inside the front door, and chaos ensues after a lengthy back and forth between the two gangs. With Miller's men charging with melee weapons, and me struggling to avoid killing my own people, that is until I throw a molotov which burns them all alive and they vilify me. So I start again and avoid any thrown objects, this time clearing out all of Miller's men group and heading outside to debrief with Dennis the leader. And it turns out the Roundels had a traitor all along who'd helped the skinhead gang get inside the building to try and overthrow the Roundels. 
and to try and get some good karma on my side, I suggest we banish him instead of an execution. A man named Patrick approaches and mentions the actual leader, Prince Davis, wants to see me. But first, I need to look the part, so I need to get some new threads. Day 45 and it's time to get fashionable, but I level up first and improve my sneaking. I find a busy high street, which seems to be the Randall Gang's area, and speak to one of the two competing fashion designers in this area, who wants my help before he'll work on me, despite me having an order from the prince. I go to collect some fabrics from a back alley dealer and stumble onto an unusual phone box which I can encounter another few times around London and convince a trader that I'm here for the fabrics. I then gaslight the rival designer by calling her outfits ugly so she'll take them out of her window. Customer isn't always right, but it worked this time. And finally, I convince a fashion model to only work for my new friend Milano in exchange for an exclusive contract and she agrees. And with that, Milano gives me my new Randall outfit. But I'm not sure it's much of an improvement but I do get the Ballistic Weave mod for armour. Day 46 and I do some exploring in this area, finding the scooter shed which acts as a repair station for vehicles, but also as a doctor, so I heal up and do some trading, hopefully avoiding tunnel cough now. I then speak to Patrick who's in the local pub in my fancy new getup, who brings me to the leader of the Roundels, Prince Davies. There's just one problem, the Prince recently lost his brother in a fight against Miller's men, He's now had a complete breakdown and only functions with the use of copious amount of chems. But I'm asked if I can help some other members of the gang to try and get things running smoothly again. Day 47 and agreeing to help I speak to a fellow named Manchester Mike in the pub who supplies the prince with his drugs. But he actually wants to help him get back to normal and not needing to rely on them. So I agree to help him set up a rehab centre. Mike wants me to clear out a safe house so he can hide the prince and set it up ready to keep him safe and secure. So I make my way over and it just so happens to be infested with cannibal beef eaters, so I spend some time clearing out these vile creatures. With that done, I need to set the safe house up, so I clean the floor using some of my junk so everything is sterile. I repair the fridge so the chems to medicate him can be stored. I fix up the bed so he can be in some relative comfort and install a security door so he can't attempt to barge it down while he's in here. I head back to Mike to tell him the safe house is set up and get asked to clear out hooligans blocking the route. So again, head over and make short work of the pests, but the walking mine robot that seems to relax in the area is more of a pain, and after a huge explosive death, I give it a wide berth the next time around. But eventually, I meet up with Mike at the safe house who's brought the prince for some treatment. But things don't go smoothly, as the rest of the gang appear after noticing he's missing, and think me and Mike are trying to kill him and take over. After some tense discussions, I eventually convince them they can supervise the treatment and we're not vying for the leadership. We give the prince the medicine, and as if by some miracle, he's back to his old ways and ready to lead the gang, and just in time for another attack from Miller's men. Day 48 and Miller's men are attacking all over the town, so I head out to target a group on my own, using my rifle to pick off a few from distance, before moving in with Molotovs and my pistol to get rid of the rest of this group. I meet up with a group of roundels who are fighting outside their clubhouse and help them take out the second group, who aren't putting up much of a resistance now my pistol is overpowered and I've got some great armour on. And finally, I meet up with the prince and the rest of the crew and follow them to fight off the remaining Miller's men group on the streets. Again, nice and easy, especially with all of the backup. But on day 49, the fighting is continuing and we need to secure the Oberon Club after hearing a strange noise. Is that you? What was that? It came from Oberon. So we head on over, ready for another fight. Inside, we have the usual Miller's men, foot soldiers to take care of, but they also brought something along a bit more intimidating. Something up here. Oh my god! Why did I go here? Oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> what the hell is that? Hoxton Tom? Radger? Okay, a gigantic bloody mutated badger. After that traumatic experience, I speak to the prince, and he's over the moon to be off the chems and able to lead the gang again. And as a thank you for helping me restore his gang to the top of the food chain, I get a pretty interesting helmet which will look great on a mannequin. But on day 50, it's time for the journey back to London Bridge to relax for a little bit. It's been a hectic 50 days. And while looking out over the Thames during sunset, I get a bit sentimental. And well, I think I'll come back and do another 50 days of adventuring.